we're sitting in the historic inn at Longshore, and we're just now beginning to find out the, the, the real and true history of the building through the efforts of people like Bob Weingarten uh, of the Westport Historic District Commission and of the, uh, the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about those research efforts in terms of the building itself? Um, Bob uh, is our master deed researcher, and he uh, spends a lot of time over at Town Hall, uh, not just our Town Hall, but also uh, the Fairfield Historical Society, uh, looking at uh, deed records. Uh, Westport, until 1835, this side of Westport was Fairfield. And so to uh, find out the early history pre-1835, uh, Bob will go over there. But um, he is uh, faithful to the chain of deeds to find out who owned what, what the, uh, the meets and bounds and parameters were. And uh, that's an important um, uh, feature in terms of understanding changes in ownership, property valuation, and use, and also when buildings were built. because. Um, when property changes hands, it um, uh, describes what is on the property. And uh, Bob's been actively at work on a couple of exhibits for the Historical Society right now where he's verifying who uh, built uh, structures and um, sometimes that is confirmed by the builder having acquired the property and it being in uh, the name of that individual. In other cases, he's established the, um, the, the source of the architecture by finding that the property, in this case of Fraser Peters' um, situation for an exhibit that's going to be coming up soon, was never owned by Fraser Peters, but there was a lien held against uh, Fraser Peters, and that's part of the, uh, uh, the digging for historical facts that... It's uh, some sleuthing, doesn't it? It, it really yeah. does, and a great deal of patience, and um, Bob is just phenomenal that way. And again, a volunteer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the Historical Society has only one full-time staff member and three part-time staff members. The rest are volunteers, and mm -hmm. he's uh, uh, an example of one. Katie Chase is an example of one. Ellen Naftalin, uh, Margaret Levitis, and Levine, uh, Molly Donovan, uh, they're all wonderful. And uh, many of them have uh, relationships with the Historical Society that last for decades because they develop an expertise. It's a personal passion, but in the end, it's something that um, the town doesn't pay for. This conversation is part of, uh, and will be part of the Historical Society's oral history archives. Uh, that group is uh, headed by Ken Smith. Can you, yes, that's another. Can you talk about those efforts and. That's another very important and fast-growing um, area of focus within the historical society. Uh, it used to be that oral histories were simply audio recordings, and uh, that was important, um, but it was quite limiting because we were not able to show the artifacts or the, the context of the discussion. Um, there was also another aspect of oral history which we have found to be limiting, it's still important, but the notion of um, oral histories being interviews of people towards the end of their lives, looking back and remembering. Very important and we want to do that, but we also want to document things as they are happening. So, for example, uh, documenting the 50th anniversary of Longshore and people's uh, impressions of how they are using this facility now is of importance to us. We don't know if it will be the same 50 years hence. Probably it will be, but um, it may not be. And having that permanent record in the form of digital video content where we have uh, images of the people, we have images of Longshore, uh, we have um, images through the, the video that even aerial Im images of the property. Uh, the shoreline could change in 50 years. So we will uh, have to see, but those are very important records to have. And so the focus of the oral history department is now twofold. Uh, to um, collect through interviews the memories of people uh, sitting in a, a headshot sort of interview and perhaps able to show photographs or memorabilia, but also to um, do live documentary of 
uh, events as they are happening as part of our collection. Now, another challenge that that uh, group faces is an awareness of technology and the ability to migrate these images over time because uh, a few years ago we were all quite content that CDs were going to be around forever and now we're learning that uh, the images and audio captured needs to be migrated to a more permanent format and we're uh, exploring ways to do that cost effectively because we feel an obligation to future generations to uh, figure out a way to preserve that. In the end, good old fashioned paper, and I mean old fashioned acid free paper is uh, still the archival standard in uh, many respects and some of the oldest collections are the most secure. Uh, things from the 19th century on are less secure and uh, for people with such items, uh, placing them in our archive may be a, a safer way to do things.